Hello grade 8 children. Today I am here to teach you mathematics relevant to your textbook. So what's the first unit in your textbook? That's called number patterns. So this is an interesting topic and we'll create number patterns using numbers. So let's take 1, 2, 3. What are those? Those are digits. So here we call these are counting numbers as well. Counting numbers. So 1, 2, 3 like that. We can't write all numbers. So that's why we put three dots after this. So if any pattern, if you can't write it all, you have to put three dots. We can create different number patterns from these counting numbers. So let's take different patterns. Take the first one, one, three, five, seven, nine. What are those? We call these are odd numbers. Numbers less than 10 only. If you take odd numbers, you have to write down 11, 13 like that. But this is the number set less than 10. So that's why here we put curly brackets and write down 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So here you can't see three dots. This is not continuing. Now we can find the next term by adding 2 to the previous. So here how you get 3 from 1? We can add 2. 3 plus 2, you get 5. 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 2, 9. So since the exact number of terms in this number pattern can be specified, therefore it is a finite number pattern. So here certain numbers are there. So remember this term, finite number pattern. Take the same thing, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, odd numbers less than 10. In this number pattern, what's the first term? The first number in the number pattern we call the first term. So in this one, what's the first term? Second term is 3. Third term, 5. Fourth term, 7. And fifth term is 9. Now let's take these numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. What are those? Those are even numbers. So we can divide these numbers by 2, the remainder is 0. So here you see two, 3 dots, that means this number pattern continues. What you call that, that's called infinite number pattern. So what's the first term in this sequence or number pattern? That's 2. The second term is 4. Third term, 6. Fourth term, 8. And the fifth term, 10. So you know how to identify terms in the number pattern. And what are the two words you learned? Finite number pattern and infinite number pattern. Let's take this one, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. So when you take two numbers next to each other, what do you call that? Consecutive terms. So here, 5 and 8 are consecutive terms. When you take 8 and 11, those are also consecutive terms. So you can take any two you can take any two terms next to each other. Those are called consecutive terms. So 14 and 17 also consecutive terms. Now 
we'll take that one and see the pattern. How you get 8 from 5? We need to add 3. 8 plus 3, you get 11. 11 plus 3, 14. 14 plus 3, 17. So how can we find out this number? So you can take any two terms, consecutive terms in the number pattern. If you take this is the next term and the one before that, that's called previous term, we can take the difference. So how you get this number? 11 minus 8 or 8 minus 5. So what you call that number? Common difference. So you are learning another term. That's common difference. How you get the common difference? You need two consecutive terms and take the difference. When you are taking the difference, don't subtract 5 minus 8. That's wrong. So next term minus the previous term. So we'll do that. So you can either take 8 minus 5 or 11 minus 8. You are getting same answer. Or 14 minus 11 or 17 minus 14. So that's how we find out the common difference. Let's take this one. Find the common difference of the following number patterns. Now you know we can take the difference between two consecutive terms. So you can take any two numbers. So I'll take these two. Then what's the difference? 16 minus 12. You get 4. This one, what's the common difference? These two. 36 minus 30. That's 6. Then you take these two. 20 minus 10. That's 10. Look at this question. Write down the first five terms of the following number patterns. You have given the first term and the common difference. So you can start from the first term. 7. Common difference is 3 means you need to add 3 to the previous term. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 3, 30. 13 plus 3, 16. 16 plus 3, 90. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can put 3 dots to show that it is continuing. Next one, first term is 14. Then common difference is plus 4 means adding 4 to the previous one. 4 plus, 14 plus 4, 18. 18 plus 4, 22. 22 plus 4, 26. 26 plus 4, 30. Next one, first term 6 and common difference 6. So that means multiples of 6. So starting from 6, 6 plus 6, 12. 12 plus 6, 18. 18 plus 6, 24. 24 plus 6, 30. This one, first term is 12. And the common difference is 8. Add 8 to that. 12 plus 8, 20. 20 plus 8, 28. 28 plus 8, 36. 36 plus 8, 44. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can put 3 dots after that. Look at this one. Write down the next two terms of the following sequences. So you need to identify the pattern. 7, 12. So what's the common difference? 12 minus 7, adding 5. So that means in this number pattern, the common difference is 
plus 5. So that means add 5 to that. 27 plus 5, 32. 32 plus 5, 37. This one, identify the common difference first. You get 7 plus 7. So what you do? 41 is the last term. So you add 7 to that. You get 48. 48 plus 7, 55. This one, what's the common difference? How you get 12 from 9? Adding 3. Then you can start from here. 21 plus 3, 24. 24 plus 3, 27. This one plus 5. 16 plus 5, you get 21. Then you can start from here. 36 plus 5, 41. 41 plus 5, 46. This one, how you get 30 from 24, adding 6 to that. So that means 48 plus 6, 54. 54 plus 6, that's 60. This one, following number pattern is created, multiplied the previous term by 2. Now, this is multiplication. 2 times 2, you get 4. 4 times 2, 8. 8 times 2, 16. 16 times 2, 32. So this is a number pattern. So I can write this one starting from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Now look at this one. 2, 4, 8, 10, 20, a different number pattern. Following number pattern is created. First added 2 and then multiply by 2. So added 2. 2 plus 2, you get 4. 4 times 2, 8. Then adding 2. 8 plus 2, 10. 10 times 2, 20. So this is also a Another number pattern. So 2, 4, 8, 10, 20. Now look at these two. First three terms are the same. But fourth term and fifth term, those are different. So from these two patterns, we observed even though the first three terms are the same, can create different number patterns. So same first three terms, but you can create different number patterns. Now look at this one. Added 3 to the previous term. 3 plus 3, you get 6. 6 plus 3, 9. 9 plus 3, 12. 12 plus 3, 15. So here... What are the numbers? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Now, first three terms are the same. 3, 6, 9, but this is 18 and 21. So how can you create that pattern? First multiplied by 2 and then added 3. Multiplied by 2, you get 6. Then added 3. 6 plus 3, 9. Then multiply by 2 again. 9 times 2, 18. 18 plus 3, 21. So this one is 3, 6, 9, 18, 21. So first three terms are the same, but you can create different number patterns. Fill in the blanks to generate different number patterns. So what can we do? 5 plus 5, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. That means adding 5. 15, 20, 
25, 30. Look at this one. You can do another pattern. We can do multiply by 2 and add 5. 5 times 2, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. Then what's the next number? 15 times 2, 30. 30 plus 5, 35. 35 times 2, you get 70. This one. 7, 14, 21. Multiples of 7. So that means adding 7 to that. So 21 plus 7, 28. 28 plus 7, 35. 35 plus 7, 42. Now create another number pattern, different one. Same, first three terms. Try to create another one. This one, I can do multiply by 2 and then add 7. Multiply by 2 first and then add 7. So multiply by 2, 21 times 2, 42. Add 7. 49. Now again, multiply by 2. 2 times 9, 18. So, yeah. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 4, 8 plus 1, 98. Now we'll discuss what is general term of the number pattern. Take this number pattern 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 means even numbers. So you want to write down the general term of the multiples of 2. Now we'll try to do that. So term, number, term and pattern. Okay, what's the first term in this sequence or number pattern? That's how can I write down 2? I can write 1 times 2 or 2 times 1. Second term. Second term is 4. Try to write down number 4. 2 times 2. Third term. 6. What's the pattern? I can write this one as 2 times 3. Fourth one, eight, two times four. No? See a pattern? Tenth term. I need now tenth term. So tenth term is what? Two times ten. By looking at the pattern, we can get two times ten. Because first term is two times one. Second term is two times two. So, 10th term, 2 times 10, that's 20. Then, what about nth term? N means any term. I can write 2 times N or when you write without this multiplication, I can write 2N. So, what's the nth term? To win, we call this as general term. So, nth term is the general term of the number pattern. So, what you can write for multiples of 2? General term is 2n. What are the numbers for n? You have to start from 1. n equals 1. First term, n equals 2, second term. So likewise, when you substitute n values, we can find out any term. So you need general term to find out the terms. Now what are these numbers? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Multiples of 3. 
write down the general term of the multiples of 3. So we'll try to do the same thing like before. First term. First term is 3. What's the pattern? I can write 3 times 1. Second term is 6. 3 times 2. This number and this one is the same. Third one, 9. 3 times 3. Fourth one, 12. 3 times 4. Then what about 10th term? I can write 3 times 10. That becomes 30. And what about the general term, nth term? 3 times n. Or I can write down 3n. So what's the general term of multiples of 3? Is 3n. So I can write down this one as 3n. So we found out the general pattern for multiples of 2. That's 2n. General term for multiples of 3, that's 3n. Now this one, fill the table below. By observing the previous pattern, multiples of 2, 2n. Multiples of 3, general term is 3n. Can you identify then what about multiples of 4? That's 4n. So you saw the pattern 2, 3, 4. What about multiples of 5? 5n. Multiples of 7? This is 7n. Multiples of 10? 10, 10n. And multiples of 11? Obviously that's 11n. Now the reverse process, finding terms using general term. If you know the general term, how can we find out these terms? So in this example, first three terms. First three terms means n equals 1, n equals 2 and n equals 3. So what you do, take the general term, substitute 1 for first term. That's 3. To get the second term, you substitute n equals 2. 3 times 2, 6. When n equals 3, you get the third term. So that's 9. What about 10th term? General term is 3n. So 10th term is 3 times 10. That's 30. Previous question. Which term is 60? Now the n term is given 60 and you are asked to find out what's the n value. So what you do? We equate. General term is 3n and that's equal to 60. Then how you solve this? You can divide this by 3 to get n. So 60 divided by 3, what you get? n equals 60 divided by 3, you get 20. So 20th term is 60. Or in other words, we can say 20th multiple of 3 is 60. Now the general term is given as 5n. You are asked to find out first three terms, 11th term and which term is 75. So what you do for the first three, you substitute. n equals 1, you get the first term. n equals 2, you get the second term. n equals 3, you get the third term. So 5, 10, 15 are the first three terms. And then 11th term. Next one you are asked to find out the 11th term. So how we find out the 11th term? Substitute 11. So 5 times 11 you get 55. So 11th term 
is 55. This one, the third part, which term is 75 means nth term is given 75. So you equate nth term is 5 in general term that's equal to 75. So how you find out n divide by 5. 75 divide by 5 you get 15. So 15th multiple of 5 is 75. This one you have given the general term is 11n. Find the 10th term. So how you find out the 10th term? Substitute 10 for n. So 10th term is equal to 11 times 10, 110. Next one, 20th term. So what you do? Substitute n equals 20. General term is 11n. That's given. And you are asked to find out the 20th term. Substitute n as 20. Multiply by 2, you get 22. Put 1, 0. 220. This one, the third part. Which term is 121 now? The reverse process. You have given the nth term. You are asked to find out the n value. And the fourth part also, same way, you are asked to find out which term is 77. So we'll do that, substitute. Then to get n, you divide by 11. You get 11 for n. So 11th term is 121. What about 77? When you divide by 11, you get in as 7. So 7th term is 77. Fill in the blanks. Now you have given different number patterns and you are asked to write down the first term and the general term. So observe the first one. 4, 8, 12, 16 multiples of 4. That means addition. Multiples of 4, that means adding 4. What's the first term? 4. What's the general term? 4n. This is 9, 18, 27, 36. Multiples of 9, starting from 9, 9, 18, 27, 36. So what's the general term? 9n. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is also number pattern, but you are adding 1 to that. So, what's the general term? Starting from 1, we can write 1n. 8, 16, 24. Those are multiples of 8. Starting from 8. So, the general term is 8n. Identify this. Multiples of 12. Starting from 12, you can write 12 n. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Find the general term for odd numbers. What are even numbers? 2, 4, 6, 8. So we found out the general pattern for even numbers. Multiples of 2. What's that? That's 2 n. Now we'll try to find out the general term for odd numbers. What's the first term? If it's even numbers, what's the first term? 2. But in odd pattern, the first term is 1. So, what can you see? You have to subtract 1 to get this one. Second term, even Numbers when you consider the second term is 4. But in this one, that's 3. How you get 3 from 4? Four? 4 minus 1. Third term for the even pattern, that's 6. 
this one 5. You can subtract and get 5. 1 from the term. Fourth term is 8 for even numbers. In this one 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. Tenth term you get 2 times 10, 20. Odd numbers, what's the tenth term? 1 less than that. So we observed a pattern 1 less than that. So I can write 20 minus 1, that's 90. Twentieth term, 2 times 20, that's 40. But we know that this is 1 less than that. This is 39. So what's the general term? We found out general term for even numbers. That's 2n. So what's the pattern? 2n minus 1. So we can straight away find out the general term for odd numbers. That's 2n minus 1. We can get odd numbers by subtracting 1 from all even numbers. So remember now, what's the general term for odd numbers? 2n minus 1. Using that, now we'll try to find out 23rd odd number. To do that, you need to know the general term. So what's the general term for odd numbers? 2n minus 1. If you want 23rd term, you substitute n equals 23. So 2 times 23 minus 1. So what's that? You get 46 minus 1, 45. 45th. So what it means here, 23rd odd number is 45. Find the 36th odd number. So what's the general term for odd numbers? 2n minus 1. If you want 36, substitute 36 for n. 2 times 6, 12. 1 remaining. 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, 7. 72 minus 1, you get 71. 36th odd number is 71. Find the 18th odd number. So what's the general term? 2n minus 1. 18th term, you substitute 18 for n. 2 times 8, 16. 1 remaining. So 36 minus 1, you get 35. 18th odd number is 35. Which odd number is 33? Now the reverse process. We know the general term is 2n minus 1 for odd numbers. So we can substitute. 2n minus 1 is equal to 33. Now, this is a linear equation. Simple algebraic equation. You know already how to solve that. So what you do? You can get rid of this minus 1 by... You can get rid of this minus 1 by adding 1. 33 plus 1. So what you get here? 34 is equal to 2n. To get n, you can divide this by 2. So when you do that, you can get n. n equals 2 times 1, 2. For 14, that's 7. So 17th odd number is 33. Which odd number is 81? Now, you need to get the general term. So, what's general term? General term is 2n minus 1. Now, that's equal to 81. Now, solve the equation. Add 1 first to get rid of this minus 1. 
you get 82 is equal to 2n. Then you need to divide this by 2 to get n. n equals 41. So 41th odd term is 81. Which odd term is 17? Same thing, take the general term equate to 17. Get rid of this minus 1. That means adding 1. You get 18 is equal to 2n. Then divide by 2. What you get? You get 9. Ninth odd number is 17. Now you need to know what are square numbers. So look at this diagram starting from 1, then 2 rows and 2 columns. You can create a square. So 2 times 2, that's 4. Then 3 rows and 3 columns. You can create the next square number. 4 rows and 4 columns, you can get the next one. Now we'll try to find out the general term for square numbers. Here is the pattern of circles forming squares which length and widths are the same. What's the first term? That's 1. Second term, 4. We'll try to write down the pattern. First term I can write 1 times 1. Second terms I can write 2 times 2. Third term, 9, that's 3 times 3. If it's 8th term, 8th term I can write by looking at this pattern, 8 times 8. What's that? 64. Ninth term, 9 times 9, that's 81. Then what about enter? This should be n times n. So n times n you can write down as n squared. So what's the general term for square numbers? You can take as n squared. Now using the general term of the square number, can you find the tenth square number? So what's the general term? n squared. Tenth term means we substitute 10. 10 squared, same as 10 times 10, you get 100. So tenth square number is 100. This one, find the twelfth square number. How you do? Take the general term n squared and substitute 12. 12 times 12, that's 144. So, 12th square number is 144. Find the 15th square number. Write down the general term. Substitute 15. 15 times 15 is 225. So, 15th square number is 225. Now we'll take triangular numbers. Look at the picture. But starting from 1, you need 3 circles to create the next triangle. What about the other one? You need 6 circles to create the next triangular number. Next one, fourth one, 10 circles to create the fourth triangular number. So what's the first term? First term is 1. Second term is 3. Third term, 6. Fourth term, 10. What about fifth term? Can you see the pattern? I'll write like this, this is 1. 
How can you get 3? I can write 1 plus 2. 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3. You get 6. 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Then what about fifth number? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Sum of numbers up to 5. So what's the number? That means adding 5 to the previous term. 10 plus 5, you get 15 as the fifth term of the triangular numbers. Now we can find out this one using a method. Now we'll take this one. If you want adding 1 up to 4, when you take first and the last, you can get 1 plus 4, you can get 5. 2 plus 3, you can get 5. So when you pair up the numbers like this, you can get 5 in two methods. Either 2 plus 3 or 1 plus 4. So we can easily find out this as 5 is the number when you add you are getting 2 times of that. So 5 times 2, that's 10. So this is the fourth triangular number. So if you want fourth, you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. How you get the number? This is the easiest way to do. Pair up the numbers like this and then see how many times you are getting the number. So the number is 5 and 2 times you are getting, that's 10. We'll take another one. If you want 8th triangular number, you have to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus like that up to 8. When you pair up like this, 1 plus 8, you get 9. 2 plus 7, 9. 3 plus 6, 9. 4 plus 5, 9. How many times you are getting 9? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times you are getting 9. So what's the number? 36. So 8th triangular number is 36. Now 10th triangular number. What you do? 1 plus 2 plus up to so when you pair up, how many sets you can get? Think about a pattern. Now previous one, we got 4 into 9 is equal to 36. 4 is here, how many digits are there? 8, 8 divided by 2. So we can think about, this is 8 divide by 2, you get 4. What about 9? Nine? 9 you are getting, think about first and last, 1 plus 8, you get 9. So we'll try to use that pattern in the next one. What's the total? 1 plus 10, you are getting 11. 2 plus 9 also 11. So how many 11s you can you will get, we can see 10 numbers are there, 10 divided by 2, 5 times you are getting 11s. So 5 times 11 or I can write 5 as 10 divided by 2 and how you get 11? First and the last one, 1 plus now, can you see the pattern? 11 is obtained by adding the first term and the last term. The following are five such terms. So, how you create that? 10 divided by 2. Now, what is 10? Number of terms. And this is the first term and this is the last term. Divide by 2. I can rewrite this as this. 10 
times 10 plus 1 is 11 over 2. So, what's the formula? You can find the number of terms multiplied by first and the last term addition divided by 2. So, we'll try to apply this formula to find out any triangular number. Take this one. 1 to 8, eighth triangular number. What's the pattern? Again, we found from the previous one, number of terms into first plus last divided by 2. Number of terms 8 divided by 2 and multiplied by first and last. 1 plus 8. Again, I can write 8 times 9 divided by 2. So, when you simplify what you get, 2 times 1, 2 times 4, 36. 1 to 20 means 20th triangular number. So, I can write 20 divided by 2 here multiplied by 1 plus 20. This is same as 20 into 21 divided by 2. When you simplify, you get 210. This one, 50th triangular number. 50 numbers are there. And divide by 2, 1 plus 50. 50 times 51. Divide by 2, you get 25 times 51. So, multiplication, 25 times 51 means first multiply by 20 and then 5. 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 5, 10. 5 times 1, 5 and 5 times 5, 25. So, when you add it, you get 1,275. Now you need to find out the general term. So what's the pattern? If there are n digits, n. The next number is 1 more than that. n plus 1. If the previous number is n, you are adding 1 to that, n plus 1. Divide by 2. So what's the general term for the triangular number? n times n plus 1 divide by 2. Here you don't need to write down multiplication sign. Brackets also okay but if you think that this is not okay you can write as n times n plus 1 divide by 2. So we'll try to find out any triangular number using the general term. Find the 10th triangular number. So, what's the general term for triangular numbers? N times N plus 1 divided by 2. Now, if you want 10th one, you substitute 10. 10 is N, 10 plus 1 over 2. So, 10 times 11 over 2, that becomes 55. So, general term is n into n plus 1 over 2 for triangular numbers. Find the 20th triangular number. So, general term n into n plus 1 divided by 2. So, you need 20th, that means n equals 20. So, 20 into 20 plus 1, 21. So, you get 10 times 21, 210. Find the 40th triangular number. 
you need the general term. n into n plus 1 divided by 2 when this is 40. So 40 into 41 over 2 divided by 2 you get 20. That means multiply by 2 and put a 0. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times 4, 8. Forty fourth triangular number. Same as before. Take the general term and substitute forty four. Now substitute forty four. Forty four into forty five. Forty four plus one. Then multiply by twenty two. So forty five multiplied by twenty two, you get. 900 plus 45, 945. So 945 is the 44th triangular number. Find 30th triangular number. General term for the triangular numbers are n into n plus 1 divide by 2. So if this is 30th triangular number, substitute n equals 30. 15 times 31. So 31 into 15, 10 and 5, multiply by 1 and then multiply by 5. Add it together, you get 400. 65 is a 30th triangular number. Find the 100th triangular number. General term is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. n is 100. Substitute 100 here. You get 50 times 101. So put 0 and multiply by 5. 5050 is the 100th triangular number. One plus two plus three up to fifteen. From this sequence, which triangular number do you get? We observe the pattern. One plus two plus three plus four, fourth triangular number. One plus two plus three plus four plus five, fifth triangular number. So if this is up to fifteen, this is fifteenth triangular. Up to 20 add, adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 20. So what is the triangular number? That's 20th triangular number. From this sequence which triangular number? 1 up to 27. So that's 27th triangular number. This one up to 19. So this is 19th triangular number. Find the 16th triangular number if the 15th triangular number is 120. So we know the pattern. Fourth triangular number, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Then to get the fifth one, you have to add 5 to that. Now 16th one you need. So 15th one is 100. 
20. So how you get the 16th one from 15th one? You need to add which number? Either 15 or 16. You have to add 16 to that. So 120 plus 16. You get 136. This one, find the 21st triangular number. If the 20th one is given, 210. You are asked to find out 21st one. So which number you need to add? 210 plus 21. So that's one here. 3 to 231. Find the 10th triangular number if the 9th triangular number is 55. So similar way, 9th one is 55 and you are asked to find out the 10th one. So how you do? Add 10 to that. Get 65. Find the 80th triangular number if the 79th one is given as 3240. How you get that? Adding 80 to that. So add 80. 3320. That's the 80th triangular number. Now we'll try to find out a pattern in between square numbers and the triangular numbers. So what are these 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21 are triangular numbers. Let's take 1 plus 3 is 4. So 4 is the square number. That's the second square number. And here 3 plus 6 you get 9. That's the third square number. What about this one? 6 plus 10, you get 16. So what's that? That's the fourth square number. I can write this one is 2 squared. Second square number. Third square number, 3 squared. 16 is fourth square number. Try to identify a pattern. What's 1? That's the first triangular number. So if I put a symbol like this is first triangular number. 3 is the second triangular number. So when you add these two, you are getting second Square number. I put a square to represent the word square. What about this one? Second triangular number and this is third triangular number. You are getting third square number. Find out a relationship. This is third triangular number. This is fourth triangular number. You are getting fourth square number. Have you seen the pattern? 3, 4. 3 plus 1, 4. 2 plus 1, 3. 1 plus 2, 2. Two consecutive triangular numbers. When you add, you get this square number. So last square number. If this is 4, this is fourth square number. If this is 3, this is third square number and this, this is 2, this is second square number. So what's the pattern? When you take any triangular number, 21st triangular number plus 22nd triangular number, what you get? We get 22nd square number. Now we'll use that pattern to identify this one. Fifth triangular number 
and sixth triangular number what you get what's the pattern you get sixth square number so you can write what's the number here sixth square number then what about tenth one and eleventh triangular number you are getting eleventh square number so we can write tenth one plus eleventh one you get eleventh square number 21st and the 22nd what you get 21st triangular number and 22nd triangular number you get 22nd square number 20 or we can write in numbers 22nd square number Thirty-third triangular number and thirty-fourth triangular number. You are getting thirty-fourth square number. So you can do this is thirty-three, thirty-third triangular number and thirty-fourth triangular number. You are getting thirty-fourth square number so that's the relationship between triangular numbers and the square numbers now we'll look at example number one in your textbook write the terms of each of the following number patterns the number pattern of the prime numbers between 1 and 17 written in ascending order so what are prime numbers only divisible by 1 and itself What's the lowest prime number? 2. So you can write down 2. Then what's the next prime number? 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, then 17. But can we write down 17? It says in between. In between means, between means 1 and 17 not included. So you can't write 17 there. So ascending order means lowest to highest. Second one, the number pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1 written in ascending order. Just the odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, all numbers. So what do we do? We have to put three dots to represent. This is continuing. Third one. The number pattern starting from 1 and followed by the terms 2 and 1 written alternatively. So, 2 and 1 separately, starting from 1 and followed by the terms. So, starting from 1, followed by the terms 2 and 1 written alternately. 2, 1, 2. The, again, 1, 2. So, that's another number pattern. So, we can put three dots to represent. This is continuing. Exercise 1.1. Fill in the blanks in the number pattern 13579. What's the first term? 1. Second term is 3. Fourth term 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 7. In the number pattern 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 multiples of 4. The first term is 4. Second term? That's 8 and the third term is 12. Question number 2. Write the terms of each of the following number patterns. The number pattern of the even numbers between 1 and 9 
written in ascending order. So what's the first number? Even number is 2. 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 you can't write because this is in between these 1 and 9. So this is in ascending order. So that's up to this point. Next one, the number pattern of the multiples of 6 from 6 to 36 written in ascending order. So multiples of 6 to 36 means you can write 36 as well. 6 times 2, 12. 6 times 3, 18. 24. 6 times 5, 30. 6 times 6, 36. The number pattern of the even numbers greater than 7 written in ascending order. Greater than 7 means above 7. So what's the lowest even number? 8. Starting from 8, you can write 8, 10, 12 like that. So this is continuing with 3 dots. The number pattern of the prime number starting from 2, written in ascending order. So starting from 2, what are the prime numbers? 2, 3, 5, 7, like that. This is not ending in finite number pattern. So you can put 3 dots. Question number three, copy the below given statements in your exercise book and mark the correct statements with a correct or incorrect symbol. We'll take the first one. The terms of a number pattern have to be in ascending order. Take 10, 8, 6 like that. That's not in ascending order. That's descending order. That's also a number pattern. So the first one is wrong because no need to be always in ascending order. Second one, the terms of a number pattern have to be different from each other. No, because 5, 5, 5, this is also a number pattern. So no need to be different to each other. So here, this is also wrong. Third one, if the tenth term of two number patterns are different, then the two number patterns are different to each other. So think about you have two number sets, number patterns. Tenth term, here you got 500 something, here the tenth term is 200. So different. So different means the two number patterns are different. So it says if the tenth term of two number patterns are different, then the two number patterns are different. So that's true. Example number one, consider number pattern of the multiples of two starting from two written in ascending order. So when you write down the number pattern, this is two, four, six, eight like that multiples of 2. Find 11th term. So what's the general term? We know multiples of 2, the general term is 2n. Then using the general term, you can answer these questions. 11th term. So how do you find out the 11th term? Substitute 11 for in. You get 22. 103rd term. 2 times 103. You get 206. Then the last part, find which term is 728 of this number pattern. That means we know the general term is 2 when that's given as 728. So how we find out n? Divide this by 2. 
728 divided by 2. 2 times 3, 6. 6 for 12 and 4 for 8. 364th term, that's multiple of 2, is 728. Example number 2. The general term of the number pattern of the multiples of 3, starting from 3 and written in ascending order, is 3n. So, already given. So, we can write down. 3, 6, 9, 12, like that. No. So, nth term is given or the general term is 3n. First part, find the 13th term. So, how do you find out the 13th term? Substitute 13 in n. 9, so 39. Then part 2, find which term is 87. So 87 is equal to 3n. So how do you find out n? Divide by 3. So n, so I'll re rewrite this in other way around. 3n is 87. Divide by 3, you get n. 87 divided by 3. 29th term is 87. In other words, 29th multiple of 3 is 87. Example number 3. In the number pattern of the multiples of 4, starting from 4 and written in ascending order with general term 4n. So general term is given. Then what's the tenth term? Tenth term means n equals 10. You can write substitute n equals 10. 4 times 10, that means 40. Part 2, what is the eleventh term? So eleventh term, just substitute n equals 11. 4 times 11, you get 44. Which term is 100? So, this is continuation. So, this is about multiples of 4, 4n. Four Which term is 100? So, in this one, nth term is given. 4n is given 100 divided by 4 to get n. When you divide by 4, you get 25. So, 25th multiple of 4 is 100. Is 43 a term of this number pattern? What are the reasons for your answer? Okay, we'll check whether 43 in this number pattern. 4n equals 43. When you divide by 4, what happens? You get 10, here 1, and here nothing. And 3 remaining out of 4. You are getting a fraction for n. What is n means? Number of terms. Can you get a fraction for number of terms? You can't get a fraction. So that's why. So 43 is not in the number pattern. So here we can write n is a fraction therefore 43 is not in this number pattern exercise 1.2 copy the table given below and complete it Number pattern, first term and the general term. So, what's the first term here? 5. These are multiples of 5. So, what's the general term? 5n. Multiples of 2, that's 2n. Multiples of 3, 3n. Multiple of 10, that's 10n. 
This is 10, 20 multiples of 10. Starting from 10, you can write 10 in. 8, 16, 24, 32 multiples of 8. Starting from 8, first term, this is 8n. These are multiples of 7, starting from 7. 7n. What about this one? Multiples of 12. Starting from 12, that's 12n. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiples of 1s. So, starting from 1, this is 1n. Or you can write without 1, just n. Question number 2. Write the number pattern of the multiples of 5 between 3 and 33 written in ascending order. So, starting from 3 to 33 in between. So, what's the first multiple of 5? 5. 5 times 2, 10. 5 times 3, 15. 20. 25. 30. 35. But you can't write 35. This should be in between 3 and 33. So, up to this point. So, this is a finite number pattern. Question number 3. In the number pattern 11, 22, 33 of the multiples of 11 starting from 11 and written in ascending order. What is the general term? We already know the general term is 11n. What is the ninth term? You substitute n equals 9. 11 times 9, that's 99. Which term is 121? Now, we know the general term 11n equals 121. When you divide by 11, you get n equals 11. 11th multiple of 11 is 121. Fourth one, in the number pattern 9, 18, 27, 36 of the multiples of 9, starting from 9 and written in ascending order. What is the general term? Now you already know. Multiples of 9, the general term is 9n. What is the 11th term? Substitute n equals 11, 99. Third part, which term is 217? Now we know the general term is 9n equal to 270. So when you divide by 9, what you get? 30th term is 270. Question number 5, in the number pattern with general term 100n. So, you have given general term as 100n. What is the 11th term? So, 11th term means you are substituting n equals 11. So, 100 times 11, you get 1,100. Part 2, which term is 500? That means 100n equals 500. When you divide by 100, you get fifth term is 500. Question number 6. What is the smallest multiple of 3 larger than 100? Which term is it in the number pattern of the multiples of 3 starting from 3? Okay, so larger than 100. 101, check whether it's divisible. Divide by 3. 3 times 3, 9. For 11, you can't 
uh, you can't divide by 3. 102, 3 times 3, 9, 12. 12 is divisible by 3. So what's the lowest number? Multiple of 3 after 100, that's 102. Which term is it in the number pattern of the multiples of 3 starting from 3? So 3, 6, 9 like that. They are asking which term is 102. So that means we know these are multiples of 3. What's the general term? 3n. So we can equate 3n equals 102. So what's n? Divide by 3. You get 34. So 34th multiple of 3 is 102. Question number 7. What's the nth term? That's basically general term of the pattern of the even numbers greater than 1 but less than 200. Greater than 1. What's the lowest multiple of 2? That's Eight like that. What's the largest number? Less than 200. You can't write 200. So one before that 198. This is in ascending order. Smallest to largest. The smallest value of n is 1. We know n equals 1. You get the first term. What is its largest value? That means you are... That means you need to find the value of n for 198. So we can write 2n equals 198 divide by 2. So that means 99th term is 198. Question number 8. It has been estimated that in a country having a population of 2 million people, the population will increase by 2 million every 25 years. Estimate the population of the country in 200 years. So first thing we need to find out how many years are there, how many steps are there for 200 years. So every 25 years it's increasing. So find out how many times it's changing. 200 divided by 25 is 8. So that means 8 times it's changing. So starting from 2 million. So I'll write millions here. So starting from 2 after first 25 years. This becomes 4 million, adding 2 million every 25 years. So they are asking if this is 200 years, not the population. If this is 200 years, that means, if this is 200 years, that means 8 times this is increasing. So that means 8th term eighth term of this sequence. So after 50 years this becomes 6 million. So this is the sequence. We know these are multiples of 2. So what's the general term? That's 2n. So you need eighth term. What's the eighth term? 2 times 8, that's 16. So these are in millions. So we can write 16 million people after 200 years. Example number 4. In the pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1, what is the general term? So 1, 3, 5, 7. What are those? Odd numbers. 
we found out even numbers the pattern is 2n. Odd numbers you can get it from subtracting 1 from even numbers. So, what's the general term of odd numbers? 2n minus 1. We'll do the second part. Part 2. What is the 72nd term? So we know the general term is 2n minus 1. So 72nd term is n equals 72. So substitute, you get 2 times 72 minus 1. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times 7, 14. Minus 1, you get 143. So, 72nd term is 143. Third part, which term is 51? This is about odd numbers. So, general term is 2n minus 1. That's equal to 51. Add 1 to get rid of this one. And then, you get 2n equals 52. Divide by 2, you get 2 times 2, 4. For 12, that's 6. 26th term is 51. Exercise 1.3. In the pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1 and written in ascending order, what is the 12th term? So what? Are the numbers 1, 3, 5? Those are the odd numbers. What's the general term for odd numbers? We know that general term is 2n minus 1. You can use that general term. You are asked to find out 12th term. 12 term means you substitute 12 in n. You get 23 for that. And what's the 15th term? 15th term you substitute n equals 15. 30 minus 1 you get 29. Part 3, which term is 89? This is all about odd numbers. So, we can write down n's term is 89. Add 1. You get 90 equals 2n. Divide by 2. You get 90 divided by 2. 40. Part 4, which term is the greatest odd number less than 100? What's the odd number, greatest odd number? 99. So, 99 is the largest odd number less than 100. Question number 2. Find the value of the sum of the 34th term of the pattern of the even numbers starting from 2 and the 34th term of the pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1. So there are two patterns here. What's the first pattern? Even numbers. So starting from 2. So 2, 4, 6 like that. So you are taking 34th term of the even number and the 34th term of the odd numbers. What are odd numbers? 1, 4. What are odd numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7. So they are asking 34th of the odd number as well. And 
first you need to find out 34th term separately and take the total because you need the sum. Okay. So we know the general term of the even numbers is 2n. Then which term you need? 34th term. n equals 34. You get 68. In this sequence odd numbers, what's the general term? 1 less than even numbers, 2n minus 1. So what's 34th term of that? 2 times 34 minus 1. You get 67. Now they're asking what's the sum of these two values. So 68 plus 67. 135. Exercise 1.4. What is the tenth term of the square number pattern starting from 1 and written in ascending order? Can you remember the general term of a square number? General term of square numbers? n squared. Now they are asking 10th term. So starting from here you have to always look at the starting point. So 1, 4 like that. So when you take the square numbers 1 squared, 2 squared, 4, 3 squared, 9. So what's the 10th term? 10th term you substitute 10. 10 squared means 10 times 10, 100. Question number 2. What is the 10th term of the triangular number pattern starting from 1 and written in ascending order? So what are triangular numbers? 1 plus 2, 3. 3 plus 3, 6. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. And what's the general term of triangular numbers? We found that general term for triangular numbers are n, n plus 1 over 2. Now we need 10th term. 10th triangular number substitute 10 for n. 10 times 10 plus 1 divided by 2 or you can write 10 times 11 divided by 2, 2 times 5, 11 times 5 is 55. Question number 3, a certain number greater than 1, less than 50, which is a term of the square number pattern starting from 1. So 1, 2 squared is 4. So likewise, this is less than 50 and written, this is in written and written in ascending order is also a term of the triangular number pattern starting from 1 and written in ascending order. So in triangular numbers, 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6 like that, 10, 15, these are triangular numbers. So one term is in both number patterns. What is this term? So they are asking what is this term? We know what's the general term of square numbers. We know that's n squared. What's the general term of triangular number? n, n plus 1, divide by 2. If one number in both number patterns, these two are equal. 
So we can take in squared is equal to in in plus one over two. Now what can I do? I can multiply both sides by two. Two get cancelled out. I get two n squared is equal to expand brackets you get n squared n into n n squared n into 1 that's plus n when you take this term to this side 2 n squared minus n squared what you get these are like terms i can write 2 n squared minus n squared is equal to n so, n squared is equal to n. So, I can divide this by n. You get n equals 1. So, only number belongs to both is n equals 1. So, we can write n equals 1 is the Term belongs to both of these number patterns, square number as well as a triangular number. Question number three. A certain number greater than 1 and less than 50, which is a term of the square number pattern starting from 1 and written in ascending order, is also a term of the triangular number pattern starting from 1 and written in ascending order. So, we will take square numbers first. Starting from 1, 4, 2 squared, 9, 16, 4 squared, 5 squared, 25, 6 squared, 36, 7 squared, 49. Because up to 49, because this is less than 50. If you take triangular numbers, when you take triangular numbers starting from 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, you get 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, 15 plus 6, 21, 21 plus 7, 28, 28 plus 8, 36, 36 plus 9, 45 and 45 plus 10, 55. You can't write 55 because this is less than 50. So these are the square numbers and these are the triangular numbers. And they are asking one number is there in both sequence. Greater than 1. So, don't consider 1 there. Other than 1, there is another number. Which number is in both sequence? 36. So, 36 is the term in both number patterns. Which square number is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sixth square number. Which triangular number is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eighth triangular number. Question number 4. The sum of the 14th and 15th terms of the triangular number pattern starting from 1 is a square number. Show that this statement is true and find which term it is of the square number pattern. 14th and 15th triangular numbers and this is the sum. 
Can you remember the pattern we observed? First triangular number and the second triangular number is equal to the second square number. If you take eighth one and ninth number of the triangular numbers, the sum is equal to the ninth square number. Now they are asking 14th triangular number and the 15th triangular number is which one? 15th square number. So when you take this one, this is a square number. You get 15 square number. So is this statement correct? The sum of two triangular numbers. These are consecutive two triangular numbers. That's equal to a square number. So the statement is true. You can write statement is true and find the term it is of the square number pattern. Find which term. So which term is that? 15th square number. Question number five, write the total number of triangles in each figure in order and see whether you can identify the pattern. The pattern of the total number of triangles in the figures in the, the given order is identical to the pattern of triangular numbers starting from one and written in ascending order. Find the total number of triangles in the eighth figure that is drawn according to this pattern. So we need to find out how many triangles are there. First diagram, how many triangles are there? Just one triangle. This one. One, two, and we can take the bigger one. That's three. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six. What about this one? First we'll count small numbers, small triangles. One, two, three, four. If you take two at a time, one, two, three. So four plus three, seven. And then seven, eight, nine. And the bigger one, that's ten. So these are the number of triangles inside this diagram. The pattern of the total number of triangles in the figure in the given order is identical to the pattern of the triangular numbers starting from one and written in ascending order. So we found out these are triangular numbers. Find the total number of triangles in the eighth figure. So we'll see what's the total number of triangle. So we can find out the general term we already know. n into n plus 1 divided by 2. If you want the eighth figure, so that means eighth term. n equals 8, 8 times, 8 plus 1, 9 divided by 2, 2 times 1, 2 times 4, that means 36. So you can write there are 36 triangles in the eighth figure. Question number 6. Sayuni buys a till and starts saving money by putting one rupee into it on the first day. So one So one rupee first day. On the second day she puts two rupees. So Second day she puts 2 rupees means the total is 2 plus 1, 3. 33 
rupees. So increasing. 3 plus 3, 6. And so on. How much money is in the till by the end of the 10th day? Now, what's this pattern? These are triangular numbers. 1, 3, 6. Next day, 4 rupees. 6 plus 4, 10. So, these are triangular numbers. You can apply the general term. So, what's the general term of triangular numbers? n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, they ask what's the value end of 10th day. So, 10th term 10 into 11 divided by 2. Divide by 2, you get 55. That means... 55 rupees in the 10th day. So, Sayuni put 55 rupees in the 10th day. Miscellaneous exercise. In the pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1, commencing from the first term, if the first two terms, then the first three terms, then the first four terms are added and continued accordingly, a special type of numbers is ob obtained. What is the special name given to these numbers? Find the number that is obtained if 15 of these terms are added in order to in order starting from the first term. So read it carefully. In the pattern of the odd numbers starting from 1, 1, 3, 5 like that, 7. Commencing from the first term, if the first two terms, first term is 1. First two terms, what's the addition of first two terms? You get 4. First 3 terms, 5, 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 1, 9. First 4 terms, 9 plus 7, 16. What you get? What are these numbers? These are square numbers. So what is the special name for this? These are square numbers. Find the number that is obtained if 15 of these terms are added. That means you are asking to find out the 15th term. So 15th term. You can use the general term. So general term of the square numbers is equal to n squared. So 15th term is 15 squared, that means 15 times 15, 225. Question number 2. Milk tins brought to a shop to be sold were arranged on a rack in the following manner. 10 tins on the lowest shelf. And every... Other shelf having one tin less than the number on the shelf below. One tin on the topmost shelf. So one. Next one, adding. So two, three, like that. What's the lowest one? That's ten tins. So this is like. A triangle. Okay, we'll write this way. First shelf, one. Second shelf, two tins. Third shelf, three tins. Like that. Last shelf, the bottom shelf, that's ten. 
find the number of milk tins that were brought to the shop. So that means adding all these numbers. So what's the sum? You can add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. Can you remember what's the pattern there? This is like 1 to 10 addition. That means this is like 10th triangular number. Finding 10th triangular number. So without adding up to 10, you can just do this is 10th triangular number. What's the general term? General term of the triangular number is n into n plus 1. Over 2. So substitute 10. 10 into 11 divided by 2. You get 55. Tins are there. Part 2. All the milk tins on the four topmost shelves were sold within two weeks. Find the number of milk tins that were sold. So first 4 means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That means fourth triangular number. We'll substitute to the formula. N equals 4. 4 times 5 divided by 2. You get 10. So this is the number of tins sold within two weeks. So what's the, so they're asking the number of milk tins that were sold. So number, number of tins sold is 10. Question number three. What is the sum of the integers from 1 to 30? 1, 2, like that. They're asking, what's the sum of all digits up to 30? So we know 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 30 is the 30th triangular number. General term of the triangular number is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, substitute 30 there. What you get? Divide by 2, you get 15 times 31. Multiply. 31 times 15, multiply 10 and 5, you get 5 times 1, 5, 5 times 3, 15, 465. So sum of all digits 1 to 30 is 465. So we covered all theory related to number patterns. That's your first unit. We'll see what we did. So we did an expression in N obtained for the N term. How to find out the general term. And then we did always N should be a positive whole number starting from 1. You can't get fraction for N. Then the next one general term of multiples of 2. You got 2n. General term of odd numbers, subtract 1 from that. That's 2n minus 1. General term of square numbers, that's n squared. And finally, we did general term of triangular numbers, that's n into n plus 1 over 2. And also we observed another thing. 
when you add two consecutive triangular numbers, you will get a square number. If it's first one and second one, addition of triangular numbers, you get second square number. Eighth one and ninth one, triangular numbers, you get ninth square number. So remember all these and practice with all exercises and examples. When you practice, you can master in number factors.